Bada bing, bada bing. Welcome to the 24th episode of Health or High Water. I'm your co-host, Trip Parks, with here, Brett Utari. What's up, buddy? How you doing? How are things going? Hey, what's going on, Trip? How you doing? Dude, killer right now. Things are going crazy for us. We got grand opening coming up in about a week. We got IV Nutrition from Wash Park coming in, O2 Boost. We got Ageless coming. We got some help with, uh, with some prizes from Clean Eats, and am I missing someone? And it's Thursday, and we got the weekend coming. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's go. So um, today for our 24th episode, we're going to be diving into a, a semi-controversial topic of supplementation. Talk about it. So do you take any supplements? I used to do a lot of protein. I used to do creatine. Um, uh, I uh, used to do amino acids. Uh, currently, I'm taking nothing. Taking nothing? Absolutely nothing. How do you feel? <laughs> um, good. I feel good. Really good. Yeah. I've been uh, – I've always taken a multivitamin. Well, I did, I did like own my own supplement store, so I was like <laughs> – I was a walking pill bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take one of these. Oh, I'll take one of these. Uh, multivitamin, uh, creatine. SARMs, poor hormones. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was all the above. I was I'm surprised I didn't rattle walking down the street. <laughs> Uh, but I take I take multivitamins. Um, I've been taking Huperzine A that helps with um, dementia, and Alzheimer's uh, prevention, as well as HMB is really good for uh, like muscle and bone density. What is it? Huperzine ha- 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 uh, ha- A. What is that? Um, off the top of my head, I don't exactly know, but I'm, I know it's I know this that there's studies uh, studies about it that. It helps with Alzheimer's and dementia. Helps like uh, reduce the risk. Yes, hundred percent helps reduce the risk. That's that's hundred percent right. But I've been taking a lot less supplements now than I ever have. Well, number one, I'm broke, but <laughs> but I don't think I'm gonna go back to doing all that garbage. Cause I, I feel pretty good right now. You know, just eating pretty clean, taking a multivitamin, working out, and staying hydrated. It's mm-hmm. pretty straightforward. But I also do know that the supplement industry is fucking crazy. Um, for those of you guys out there, ninety percent of most supplements are garbage. I worked in supplementation for like eight years. It's mostly garbage. You don't need most of it. You should be getting most of your shit from your food, mm. right? I mean, do you, so do you have any? Do you have any uh, clients that talk about supplementation or have questions about it? Um, do they have questions about supplements? Yeah, like you know, what do I take? The, what do I take? Um, I'm taking this. Is it good? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. It depends on what. It depends on what we're using it for, what we're using it to supplement, and does this person need that? Is that something that they're going to need based on their activity level, based on what they're what they might be missing, you know, in their regular diet? Um, so there will be times where I'll recommend specific supplements. Yes. What kind of what kind of supplements do you typically recommend? Uh, amino acids is usually one of the first ones that that I'll recommend uh, for a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people. Amino acids, um, protein. In a lot of cases, recommend protein for particular programs. Uh, what else? Um, amino acids and protein are pretty standard. Um, occasionally a multivitamin, occasionally. Um, maybe occasionally a green supplement, greens, although I typically try to get people to do that naturally. Um, what am I missing? Anything that I really re- recommend? Yeah, those are kind of the big ones that I, th- I see a lot of, yeah. A hundred percent. It's the uh, for me. It's the three. It's the pre-workout protein and multivitamin. Those are the three that I I, I recommend. T- typically, because people aren't getting enough protein throughout the day, and going into protein. All right, I'm gonna blow some of your guys' brain here. Different types of protein are absorbed differently in the body. Whoa. The audio jacks on the bottom. <laughs> Tell us more. So, like, you guys, eat, well, you, you know this, that there's, like, weight concentrate, isolate, hydrolate. There's there's tons of different kinds. And whey itself is a byproduct from dairy, mm-hmm. right? So it's all it's already, it's, it's already over, it's already, like, um, over-processed, right? Mm-hmm. You're talking about a hyper-processed food, uh, protein. And when you have, like, the lowest level, like, weight concentrate, you're, you're getting, like, upwards of only, like, 30% uh, digestion, mm. right? So the rest is going to bloating, diarrhea, all that discomfort that comes with typically you know, drinking protein powders. Yeah. Like when you get up to weight, I, I isolate and hydrolate, you're talking about like 65 to 70. You're not really getting the, your entire scoop of protein. Mm. So I recommend when you're getting protein powders and stuff like that, make sure there's multi-source proteins in there, like some whey concentrate, some 
vegan protein, some or whatnot, or, or just stick with vegan and, and animal based protein powders. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me toss this back in there. Uh, Hupperzine A is a natural compound derived from the Hupperzia serrata plant, also known as the Chinese club moss. It's a nootropic, um, and it is been in studies to improve memory by increasing acetylcholine levels um, and uh, enhance cognitive uh, performance. Um, and then it, it has been uh, done in a ton of research studies for Alzheimer's disease support um, for its potential role in slowing the progression of the diseases. Um, so I wanted to touch back on that. And then you can go and read some studies on Hupperzine A. So, yes. Well, no, I'm glad you did that because mm-hmm. I, I, as soon as my mom had her stroke, I was like, well, I know that she'd had, you know, she smoked, she was unhealthy and pretty much all of her nutritional aspects of her life. And that there was still some kind of a chance that it was genetic, mm-hmm. right? That like that's genetically predisposed to, to have this down the road somehow. Mm. So I was like, what can I do now to make sure that I have my brain when I'm older? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Hopper's Iron A doing that. Um, there's, there's some other ones. Yeah. Um, HM, was HMB one of them? I think so. I did. I did. I did a ton of research on, on on this kind of stuff and just trying to prepare myself in case something like that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. No tro- nootropics uh, are cognitive enhancers. It's any substance that's believed to have a positive effect on cognition, memory, creativity, or other aspects of mental performance. So it's kind of a blanket term. It was coined by the Romanian psychologist and chemist Dr. Cornelio E. Geria. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Geria in 1970s so it just kind of like covers any substance it could be a plant anything that is thought to improve cognition n- nootropic so I, th- I i thought that neurotropics were the, the way that they're different than just taking a pill or whatnot is mm-hmm. that they are digested and the body releases the chemical instead of it using the chemical from the pill mm-hmm, mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. that right yeah mm-hmm. yeah i mean yes yeah i don't know the answer to that um I'm That's not, the best way to do it, though. The best yeah. way is to have your body is is to have something allow your body to do a process. Yeah, and that's a really good transition into peptides because that's what peptides are really. Mm, talk, it's, preach about it. So, like, again, like you know, I'm I'm not guys, I'm not an expert here, but we, I've been doing all this kind of stuff. I've been doing peptides and hormones and pre pre and, and SARMs and pro hormones for about twelve years now, and peptides are the best that you can get. And I don't know why that doctors aren't helping. Uh, you, you, like the youth with, with with hormone deficiencies and whatnot with these kind of things because they're so safe. Peptides are just branch chain, br- branch chain amino acids, right? So you you put it in your stomach and then your body tells that thing to produce itself. Mm-hmm. Which which like let's say you're doing steroids, like you put you put testosterone in your system and you it uses that testosterone, mm-hmm. which like you're saying is way safer if you have your body doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean you want your body to be doing. Everything, all supplementation is to help your body, you know, do natural things. Yeah, peptides, amino acids, uh, com- large complex molecules, essential for various biological functions in all living organisms. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. And they've exploded, too. Um, who does peptides? Uh, um, uh, all these companies now, hormone companies and, and uh, um, a- a clinics, right? You can go and do... A specific kind of peptides, right? Yeah, so like, um, you can't really get them online legally. You have to go to a clinic nowadays. Okay. Um, but you can do everything from uh, like there, there's this one amazing peptide called BPC one five seven, and it's it's called the Wolverine peptide, right? But what it does is it radically fixes your body with injury where it's placed. So if I have tennis elbow and someone puts puts the BPC one five seven in. It heals way faster with that than without it, and they mm. call it the Wolverine. And there's 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 like there's there's a there's even one for getting you tan. Mm. There's there's even one for getting you tan. So these peptides are really great ways to have our body produce the things that we that we need or are lacking in, mm. right? Like I took one that uh, when I was working with you, um, it was called Ibutamin. I mean, it's it's labeled as a peptide, but chemically it's not. Um, but it helped me with putting on weight. Help with my stomach calming down. It got my gut in check. Mm. I, I I put on healthy weight, which mm. is really hard for me, and it was a miracle drug. So are these f- are these for people with con- spe- specific conditions. Let's say somebody has like a GI problem or 
you know, whatever, uh, whatever it is that they have, like an abnormality, or is this for everybody? Like, who who goes and gets this stuff? I mean, uh, by the way, by the, by the way that they're out there is they're they're safe for everybody. But I recommend if you're having an issue, it's like, hey, I can't put on weight, or hey, I'm having a hard time losing weight. I have this this lacking injury. I have a, a bodybuilding competition I need to get tanned for, and I can't sit in, I just can't sit in the booth for that long. Using it for those kind of aspects, um, but they're they're healthy. They're branched chain amino acids. There's seven thousand or more than that naturally occurring branched chain, uh, branch mm-hmm. chain amino acids that are occurring in our body. So it's you know not far off from being natural. Yeah, BPC one five seven. Also, why it's called BPC Body Protection Compound. It's a synthetic peptide derived from a portion of the human gastric juice protein known as the body protection compound. Uh, it is not naturally occurring in the body, um, but is created through laboratory synthesis. Uh, it's gained attention as a potential therapeutic peptide due to its reported regenerative and healing properties. Um, through recent research and studies, it is believed to promote tissue repair and aid in various physiological processes. Um, gut health, anti-inflammatory, tissue and muscle healing. Um, interesting studies. We'll link those studies in the description of this, by the way, guys. Oh, 100%. And if you're interested in these kind of peptides, we could also um, put a link for some uh, clinics. I know one in South Carolina I went to. Shout out to Alpha Male Clinic. They were the most knowledgeable people on peptides I've ever heard. Mm. And they had a peptide for everything. They had, this little, like, they had this little like video going on in their waiting room that explained different peptides and what they mm-hmm. did. And I thought that was awesome so i'm worried about like because i'm kind of i'm a naturalist myself like i try not to put anything in my body that i don't need sure. where's that line and i know you're the science guy you're the guru of that where's that line for you like somebody going too far right and, and trying to do like have too much like where is that line for you is there a line and then how do you kind of like justify that or find that line for you and your clients so um that's actually a really really good question is that line and now if you're asking 21 year old trip that <laughs> there was no limit. <laughs> yeah, you know, Throw, when you were trying to uh, make it to the NFL. <laughs> yeah, there was no limit. Give me everything. Yeah, put, me on, put me on everything <laughs> that could possibly, yeah. Um, what about responsible trip? Responsible trip now is is moderation. And if it is affecting your health in a negative aspect, mm-hmm. it's too much. Right? If, it's, if, if you're putting your heart at risk, you're putting your liver at risk. A, a lot of... Um, Let's say you're taking testosterone pills for hormone replacement therapy. That's very heavy on your liver because it's got to go through your liver, your kidneys, and that's why like pills aren't as effective as taking shots for that way, mm. right? So if if I'm doing that and then I'm adding like Winstrol and I'm I'm, I'm taking uh, you know all this other shit on top of it and I'm taxing the rest of my body and to the point where it's not healthy, that's too far, mm-hmm. right? So having uh, you know having your blood work done every six months or even even sooner if you're on those kind of things. Um, is really crucial to that. Is 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 really something you and I preach is moderation. Yeah. Is like, hey, like you know, let me let me do what's the dose that's on there, and, it, and if like if I am on a cycle of something that I need to get off, that you take that you take that time off. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, listen, you, you make sure that your body's working properly. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure a lot of people disagree with me, like you know, that all this stuff is so healthy that you can you can kind of push it, but I I, I do think that there is a line. Well, there's a mental health aspect too, you know, to yes. to it as well. You, you you can't be constantly looking outside of yourself as like I need this to be better. I need like I'll, I'll feel better when I have this. Um, but I was just interested in your perspective too, with you know people with certain condition, uh, particular conditions, uh, and how we integrate these treatments into that. I, I really right. I, I really think that it's listen to your medical. Uh, advisor for that whoever that is mm-hmm. listen to them first and foremost and, and don't t- don't take this challenge or don't not challenge don't take this on yourself and just start prescribing yourself like crap mm. right because you can still find peptides and stuff online to, to send them to you mm-hmm. i mean the illegal ways and mm-hmm. that's not going to stop someone from doing it but you know talk to a professional about this someone who's certified in it someone who's a, a, a rn like go to a clinic and talk to them about these kind of things and trust your health professional yeah. for that don't make these choices yourself i think that's the line yeah there's uh so so um do your own research is funny when you uh, i've heard that in the last four or five years oh, um, <laughs> do your own research uh i love and i encourage at all times people to do their own research i love it do it 
Uh, nobody knows your body better than you do. Maybe a physical therapist could tell you, oh, this is the medulla oblongata, right? Or <laughs> could tell you this is your ulna nerve. Like, like they could tell you exactly what it is. But honestly, nobody knows how food makes you feel, how this particular food makes you feel, you know, how this, 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 uh, your sleeping patterns. Nobody can tell you. You're you're in your body 24 hours a day. Nobody knows your body better than you do. Now, now a professional can tell you, can, can put names on this. Hey, this is a particular disease with kyphosis what happens is your shoulders round forward your upper back like so we have names and ways to organize this data and then we've created professionals that specialize in this type of data so yes totally but by by no means do you have to be in the dark as an average person who has a different job like oh i don't have the knowledge like a lot of this information now is available online through podcasts like this and through uh blog articles and 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 then cross-referencing Obviously, some might be over your head to to understand it, but when you know you were saying it's like, hey, go to your local professional. Sometimes that's a tough question. That's true. <laughs> who's, who's who's my local professional? Because having a doctor degree, a doctorate does not always qualify you as as you know following the Hippocratic oath. And I agree. And I agree. I'm actually going to say something very controversial right Hit now. Me. I think that doctors, due to big pharma and their incentives, have ruined our healthcare system and ruined the trust in doctors. Oh, doctors, do you hear that? <laughs> oh, come, womp, womp, womp. come and well, we got boxing gloves if you if you want to take trip on for a round. Yeah, but we have to wear them on our feet. <laughs> we'll kickbox like that. <laughs> Can you kick? Uh, I don't know. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I gotta tell you guys a quick story. <laughs> Yesterday, Brett and I were talking like, you know, hey, if we make if we make our money, what are we gonna do? And you know, Brett, Brett wants to do his golf thing, and then I told him I was like, I want to go buy a banana farm in Belize. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if you were serious or not. I still don't know if you were serious. <laughs> he just starts laughing. I was like, Why are you laughing? He's like, I can't tell if you're serious. I still don't know if you're serious. But you know, don't tell me. Just let it. Just let it be a thing. <laughs> So doctors uh, have ruined health care. I'm talking about like general care practitioners. I'm not talking about like physical therapists or nutritionists or whatever. I'm talking about your day-to-day doctors that are prescribing, you know, antidepressants when it's not getting to the root of the problem. SSRIs for everything. You know, uh, statins for, for blood work or for blood and, and, and keeping them on for a while instead of getting them on a workout plan. Like I'm surprised doc- doctors just say go get some physical activity and expect people to know what the hell that means. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like – that's there's that, that's why you and I are trying to change this process of looking at everything together, right? So can I tell you about um, um, the step thing? So the watches started counting steps. It was the first time I ever heard like, oh, get your 10,000 steps, get your 10,000 steps. Sounded gimmicky, and at first I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. It's one of my favorite metrics. It is so simple and to, to be like, move your body more during the day That's do true. things go for a walk get outside take this go here go here move your body more it's shocking how many people don't even realize that they take 2000 steps a day uh, 800 steps a day it's like your body was meant to move you doesn't matter what diet you have you could have the perfect diet if you're only taking 1200 steps a day what do you your body's doing nothing well, and, and why why is it? It's, it's turning into survival mode because it's it's trying to save up for exertion later. It's crazy, right? And mm-hmm. I, I I I didn't I didn't I never thought about it that way because I was always like, all oh, these steps are stupid. I, this is stupid. But if it gets people, if they get people people moving, and, and it, 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 you're right. If it, if it gets people moving, then fuck it. Yeah, it's one of the best things for hiking for me is I get to track my steps throughout the week, and I go, oh, oh I did. Uh, 30,000 on does Sunday. It, does it know you're going on an incline? And then it got the elevation too. So it cracked. I, oh. So, okay, I did 40,000. Okay, I know my feet start hurting around 42,000. And so I can start to track my progress of like when my joints are starting to, where, where their limit's at. And that's how I can track my progression of hiking. So so the steps are actually huge. Uh, I know it's, it recommends everybody does 10,000. That's just a general number. Uh but, but what you're trying to figure out is, like, how much can your joints take? It's not always about your cardiovascular system. Oh, I'm getting my heart moving. A lot of times it's about my knee and flexibility and my cartilage. Uh, the purpose and, and health of the cartilage is to feel uh, – to feel that pounding during the day, our bodies were meant to jump too, right? So we have the ability throughout our body to jump. I mentioned this on another podcast. I had my good friend Jessica, 
who I hope is listening to this podcast, was like, I don't have any jump training in my life. I was like, jump training doesn't mean you have to sit there and jump around, but find a way in your day to have some impact because your body needs impact. However you do impact, whether it's a a light jog, whatever it is, get impact in your day. Your joints will be healthier for it. And if you guys are having joint issues uh, in general, a really good uh, supplement I I I took for a long time, uh, glucosamine, chondroitin, and shark cartilage. If you guys are having issues with joint pain, even like prior to to fitness, too, it's like, hey, I wake up, my knee's hurting, and and there might be an injury there. Glucosamine, chondroitin, shark cartilage is great to get get some get some lubrication in those joints and help the process you're talking about mm. about keep keeping people moving. What's this shark cartilage? Tell me more about that. It's when you grab a shark by <laughs> grab a shark by the gills, you punch it, you put it on the prices right with Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, shark cartilage is uh, just kind of like, you know, we have not bone, but cartilage in our nose is taken from sharks and put into pills with glucosamine and chondroitin as a combination uh, joint pill. Mm-hmm. Um, each one of those by themselves is great too, though, right? Who sells that? Is that like uh, a... Everybody sells um, a combination of at least gl- uh, glucosamine and chondroitin. Uh, nature, nature Life or whatever that is. Um there's green bottles. Uh, every everyone makes makes one. They're they're all over uh, Amazon as well. So if you guys are having joint problems and, and to the point where you guys cannot move, this would be a good a good start because Brett's 100 percent right. Like once you get moving, you have fluid going in your joints that is supposed to be there, supposed to be looped around. You just you feel better. Like just for the same thing, kind of like arthritis. They, they used to keep people not moving with arthritis, and now they're moving people all over the place to keep those joints going. It's so interesting. Uh, shark cartilage was uh, is a dietary supplement that is derived directly from the cartilage of sharks. Um, typically, their fins or skeletons that gained popularity in 1990s. Uh, for its potential cancer in various inflammatory conditions due to the beliefs that because sharks don't develop cancer and that their cartilage might possess anti-cancer properties. Um, however, these claims have been largely disputed. So there's no sign. I mean, and that's everything too with supplements is everything is disputed. Uh, everything is disputed. I mean, does protein work? Does this work? So right. so really it's a, it's a interesting thing. Um Source well, of well, the thing is, and sulfate. a lot of a lot of uh, companies out there do their mm. own testing, and that's cool and all. But like, mm. when you want your own opinion, you need a, a, a third party, uh, a third party test mm-hmm. for your products. And even then, that's only one test. Yeah. When you talk about like pharmaceutical grade pills and whatnot, like they have like test upon test upon test because they have money for that. Supplementation. Some some borrowed his gym is just like I want to start a supplement line. And then calls up someone like bulk supplements, and they do the exact same formulation as someone like Five Star and uh, Five Star and Walmart. They say they have their own crazy formula, and it's the exact same exact same crap. And, yeah. they're, and they're not regulated by the FDA either, so people could be ingesting rat poison for all the fuck they know. I mean, you know how I feel about the FDA. I don't trust the FDA as far as I can throw them. There's so much corruption in all those governmental bodies. I mean, she argue with me. There are is so much corruption. In governmental bodies, look at the law. Lo- lobbying should be illegal. It's not. It's it. it I, it's it's it, there. It is, and it should. You be can illegal. lobby. You can pay. You can pay. You literally, if you invent a supplement, create it, you can pay twenty million dollars for them to FDA approve it, yep. and you can give it to the lobbyist. They will approve your supplement, and then it will go on the shelves as uh, Chantix, a chewing gum. And then what will happen is they'll find out it caused cancer. Or like the baby powder talcum um, from Johnson and Johnson, and then ten years later, seventeen percent of your gross revenue goes back to uh, the the lawsuit. So yep. you're still making money. So you come out with a supplement, it goes through the FDA, you pay them, you lobby them, you found out it was negative result, you pay for the studies, uh, all the studies are falsified, and then it, it's crazy. Dude, it's crazy. It's sad. That's how that's how the FDA works right now. It's sad. Look at who's on the FDA. Yeah. Look who the top people on the FDA, who they are, and what companies they work for. The companies that they, the people who are top of the FDA work at the top of comp- supplement companies that are then recommending their supplements. Yeah, it's <laughs> disgusting. It's crazy. It's disgusting. And, and 
there's not it's, it's, it's almost like the wild west of food is supplements it's crazy there's no rules really not, well, not, except for SARMs and pro-hormones dude and then my friend Christy who will be on the podcast was telling me too about like and, and, and I, I knew this too but we were talking about is like the food sources in general in the oh, US God. because of because we're not what is it called where they where they rotate the crops? Is it just crop rotating? There's, yes, crop rotating. Yeah, where you're trying to biodiversify the soil, keep your soil healthy, to have nutrients in your food. We're just not doing that anymore. We're creating all these genetically modified organisms that they say are better for you. Uh, granted, the banana is genetically modified. If you have seen what the banana should look like, it's insane. Or corn. I used corn. Corn used to look- is genetically modified. Our bodies don't don't recognize these foods. Um, but now what they can do is patent these foods so they can genetically own corn. They can own own an actual plant and seed. And there's a person, Vandana Shiva, that you have to look up. She's an amazing, incredible woman. The most – I mean, you will go down the rabbit hole of knowledge with her. And she is an agricultural specialist. She's an astrophysicist. She's an author. She's a, a, a speaker for the world. And, 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 and she'll just like – She'll bring so much light to your life. Vandana Shiva. Check her out. Well, that was a, a lot for our episode. A lot of negative things. But there are great... That wasn't negative. Well, it was honest. These are, honest. These are things. Honest. On, honest things about... These are things. And it's, it's stuff that you guys should you know talk to your senators about. Mail, mail them about this kind of stuff. Like You're being sold garbage. You yeah. Know? Not, not just supplementation, but our foods. Yeah, let's go to your farm. I mean, you can avoid it though. Go to your farmers markets. Hook up with yes. a local butcher. Yes, yes. You can. There's. This is not negative. Don't support these people. Stop. Stop drinking uh, sucralose and stop getting uh, what's it called? Uh, um, the fake sugar, the aspartame, aspartame. products. Aspartame. Stop eating crap. We go to. Yeah, I mean, you can. You can vote with your with your dollar. I love that. I love that about this, and I think that's a good place to get this podcast. I know you got to get out of here pretty soon. Um, mm-hmm. We want to thank you guys so much again for for watching or listening at least um, from sea to shine and sea. We couldn't be here without you guys. This this bit this project has been quite awesome. You know, um, <laughs> Brett and I we we check all we check on the updates all the time on the computer, and every time we even get one more listen, we just get so excited because you guys are supporting us. So thank you guys so much. Go to www.ascendperformancetraining.com backslash blog for some of the best content you've ever seen. If you want more information about us or you want to learn more about what we do, go to Amazon or Kindle and look up Health Profiling, written by Trip Parks and edited by Brett Hodori. As well as make sure you guys are listening to all of our episodes. We've got 24 now. I'm sure you guys have missed one or two here or there. Go back and list all to make sure you're caught up because there's going to be a whole bunch of new ones coming out. We got a doctor coming on on Tuesday that you guys are gonna be really excited to, excited to hear from. Works with uh, nervous system, I believe. Doctor. Uh, Doctor Sarah. Uh, yeah, she does uh, somatic healing. Yeah. Works with the nervous system and um, some other stuff that she's gonna talk about. And uh, I believe she owns Vibe Gym Collective, or if she works inside there, or owns it. But uh, yeah. Awesome. And then if you guys are in Denver, Colorado, August 12th is our grand opening, 11 to 3 p.m. at 1472 Jersey Street, Denver, Colorado, 80220. See your beautiful faces there. Again, thank you guys. Make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, following, and telling your brother, sister, squirrels, friends, cousin about this podcast because every little bit helps. Thank you guys. Peace. Peace.